also, of course, there's been a lot of international agreements and international meetings to try to limit emissions. And the reason why they're international is because it's really not fair if one country tries to, um, um, you know, make improvements on how they do things, it's going to cost money and it's going to cost time. And so if everybody's agreeing that they all have to limit carbon dioxide, then economically it would be fair. So there was this uh, Kyoto Protocol in Kyoto, J Japan, where international bodies agreed um, to uh, that there's a problem with climate change and that um, everybody needs to limit their carbon dioxide emissions and by uh, to a certain percentage by a certain time. But the United States, although they went and everything, they did not uh, ratify, they did not they brought, brought it back home, but the Congress did not sign it. They didn't pass it. So we're not a full partner in the Kyoto Protocol. Russia did sign, and there's lots of reasons why. Because, for one, they were even less efficient than they are now. And if they had to drop their carbon dioxide um, emissions um, by a certain percentage, they've already basically done that. So for them, it was okay to sign on. It's not going to be as much of an economic um, problem as it is for the U.S. So it's a very, very complicated situation. Smaller countries, of course, are going to sign on. They don't have as much influence in the world. They don't have as much carbon dioxide emissions. They rely more on, you know, buying things from other big companies or countries. So it's, um, it's a really interesting, complicated problem that's not yet been solved, although there's meetings going on all the time. There was the Copenhagen meeting that followed up the Kyoto meeting, and there's going to be a, me a meeting here in December in Cancun. They just keep coming together, trying to um, agree on how, how to work it out so it's fair for all the countries to limit their carbon dioxide emissions. But this is part of the problem. The reason why the U.S. wouldn't sign on is because um, in 1995, you can see the United States and the developed world, all the developed world, was the blue, uh, were the, the dominant, dominated the carbon dioxide emissions. But down here, the, if you fast forward um, 40 years, the developing world is going to catch up quite a bit to the industrialized and high energy uh, societies of the developed worlds. So the U.S. is not going to always be the biggest um, contributor um, of carbon dioxide emissions. So the thing is with the Kyoto Protocol, the, the caps and the uh, on carbon dioxide emissions were placed on the developed world, but not the developing world. Because the developing world says it's not fair. They can't feed their people. They can't grow their economies if they have to follow the same stringent um, pollution guidelines as um, the developed world. So they, they were left off of it um, out of fairness. But the United States said, but they're going to catch up and they're going to they're going to be producing more. Um, you know, for example, China will be producing more carbon dioxide than the USA by 2035. So it's really not fair. They'll never be able to um, compete with China economically um, if we have rules that they don't have. So it's a very, very complicated situation and people are trying hard to work it out so that it's fair for, for all the partners um, in the world that everybody can continue to grow their economies and have strong uh, defense and, and you know healthy people and all that kind of stuff um, and at the same time uh, protect the world from from too much carbon dioxide emissions.